This is part two of the mini ITX build. Let's get started. What's up guys? In this video I'm going to be unboxing and showing you the motherboard as well as getting it ready for installation into the case. Uh, so let's jump right in and show you what we have here. So this is a Z97i Plus. Uh, it's an ASUS board. Um, supporting Haswell, which is what I care about. Uh, the board itself is here and I'll show you that in more detail in just a second. So let's see what we get in the box. Now one of the things that I uh, liked about this board was it uh, included wireless, which is important because for the time being uh, we are going to be having a wireless connection up to the second floor of my house uh, until I can install a hardwire network cable up there, so that's useful. Uh, you also get SATA cables, there's four of them to in total. Uh, front panel connectors is what I assume these things are and a black backing plate as well as the manual and uh, CD right there and a case badge I guess so let me show you what the motherboard looks like here's the motherboard uh, nice and small and compact uh, so, and that's really the draw of the mini ITX form factor uh, you have a couple of slots here for DDR3 memory PCI Express for our video card uh, we have some SATA 3 uh, 6 gig per second uh, port, so there's four of them here. USB 3.0, uh, your, obviously your uh, slot for uh, memory or socket for memory. Uh, we have uh, fan headers here, so there's three fan headers, uh, which should be enough for what we care about. This right here is our wireless controller. And here's what the I.O. looks like. So we have legacy PS2, four USB 3.0 ports, pretty much every kind of display out that we care about, so uh, VGA, DVI, uh, DisplayPort, and HDMI, USB 2.0, Gigabit Ethernet, and audio. You've seen me install memory and CPUs before in other videos, and if you haven't, I will leave links in the description so you can go check those out. Uh, in this build, we're using 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance memory. This is rated at uh, 2133 megahertz for speed. And for the processor, uh, we went with an i5-4690K. Now this is the second generation or second um, revision of Haswell, and it should be a little bit better um, temperature-wise. Uh, and because it's the unlocked K-series processor, uh, it lets us uh, overclock it. And that is going to be something that we're definitely going to be doing for this build. So let me get everything installed, and I'll show you what that looks like. And just like that, everything's installed on the motherboard, so memory and CPU. Looks pretty cool. And uh, that vengeance memory uh, is pretty sharp. To cool the CPU, I am bringing back my Hyper 212 Evo. So this was the cooler that I had on my original uh, PC build from a few years ago. Uh, I uh, have since replaced it in my new build with a uh, water cooling setup. Uh, this is a pretty solid, pretty good cooler. Uh, I had my Sandy Bridge i5 overclocked uh, and had awesome temperatures and I think this is going to do really well in this application. Now uh, I haven't installed it yet uh, because I need to get a sense for uh, the sizing of it all inside the case. Now based on everything that I've seen and the research that I've done, this should fit in just fine. Uh, but I'm going to kind of check uh, twice before I actually go through the hassle of putting this in. So let's take a look at the case and see what it looks like. Sorry about the weird angle, but uh, I wanted to make sure that we had some good lighting so you could see what was going on. I've got the motherboard sitting on the uh, tray here, and I've got the cooler on top. And you can see that we have plenty of room between the top of the cooler and the top of the case. So everything is going to fit the way that it should have a little bit of a clearance issue with the fan on the cooler. Uh, the bottom of it is actually hitting the top of the memory. And you can see if I turn it this way that the top of the fan clears the top of the cooler by just a, a little bit. Now uh, I could have avoided that by getting some lower profile memory uh, but from a budget perspective these happen to be cheaper than the uh, low profile stuff so I went with that. Um, I normally would be 
a little bit concerned about that, but in my case, uh, the case fan that sits on the back of that Bit Phoenix Prodigy is right about here. Uh, so there's a really small gap between this and where the fan is. So I think I'm going to get good airflow anyways from this side to this side. The other option was to turn the cooler this way, uh, but that wouldn't be really a good idea because the video card is going to sit right here, and uh, I didn't want to have the heat from the video card being pushed across the uh, the fins. So I think this is going to be sort of the best application. Now in the front of the case, I'm going to be putting in a 240 mil fan to get some good airflow that way. So I think we should be fine. Uh, I will be keeping an eye on temperatures once I get everything installed and running, uh, but for the time being this is going to work out uh, and should be fine. That's going to do it for this video you guys. Uh, the next couple of videos uh, should uh, wrap up the project. Uh, I've got some uh, other parts to show you. I've got to install this and uh, get it all set up. Now check out the description below for the playlist that I'm putting together for this build. Uh, also you're going to find everywhere else that I'm at so you can follow me there for uh, updates and uh, that's going to about do it right now. I'm, I'm beat. It's about 2 in the morning and uh, I'm excited to get this done but I have to get some sleep. So uh, anyways, thanks for watching guys. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.